Hello everybody, I am TW1 and welcome to my mini series where I break down for the king. This is going to be a great series for new players and maybe some of the experienced ones. You might pick up a trick or two, you never know. For the king does have a tutorial which is fine, it even has an in-game encyclopedia which is excellent. But there is more to learn, there is some more little minutia stuff and some small mechanics that you can deep dive into and we are going to be doing that throughout this series. This first episode though is going to be a little bit of an introduction one so it's going to be mainly for the new player. I will give you that a warning to all the experienced guys, you might want to skip this one, it's not really for you. Saying that, quick disclaimer, I'm not an expert so if you are an expert and you want to watch this video and then maybe say I've missed something or you know give me some more tips, by all means drop them in the comments, that would be excellent. Likewise, if I actually taught you something, you're an experienced player, hit the like button so I can teach some more of you guys out there. That is what I'm trying to do. So, like I just said, this is going to be an intro episode where we will be covering team composition, base stats and the lore store. But before we start that, we need to remind ourselves of one little screen and that is this screen when you load up the game. In short, this screen means one thing. It means that this game is not intended to be easy nor is it meant to be completed on its first time. This is a roguelike game, very similar to Faster Than Light, very similar to Binding of Isaacs, meaning when you lose all your lives, the game will end. The, the run is dead and you will have to start a new run. So don't get disheartened if your run comes to an end. It's just the way it goes you'll have to uh, start a new one and hope you can do better. With that all said and done though, let's talk about the lore store. So, like I just said, this game is not easy and it is intended to take multiple runs to complete one of its many stories. While you're playing the game, you'll be earning lore books by completing quests, finishing dungeons and more. With these lore books, you can go into the lore store and unlock character classes, some extra places of interest on the map like teleporters that can help you out, cosmetic items and even some really really rare weapons and armour and other things like that which are excellent. They make the game easier for you and that is the way that the game is intended to be played. You do a run, you complete it, you maybe die after a little while, you come to the lore store, you pick up a few more items and you go off again to do another run because now you have some extra boosts and perks that will help you out. This is, by the way, a, a wonderful system, a lot better than the typical microtransaction model. So now we're all caught up on the lore store, let's get to picking our team. Select what story mode you would like to play, I personally prefer the For the King story. For new players, definitely go with Apprentice difficulty, the game is not easy by all means, so definitely go with that. And once you've selected your map and your difficulty that you would like to do, you are then presented with the character selection screen. In your adventure, you can bring from one to three characters, that is being solo, or you can do online play. I always recommend three characters if you can. If you're going to play co-op with one friend, it might get a little bit rough. The game is not easy with uh, less characters. We'll get into why a little bit later. So yeah, if you can cut, select all three characters, by all means do that. So from this screen, you can also change appearance, class, and name of your characters. Class selection is going to be the important decision you will be making though, because each class comes with a different set of stats, and it is those stats that we are going to be deep diving into. All of these stats are checked throughout the game, be it in world exploration or in combat. Very, very similar to D&D, &D, Dungeons & Dragons. If you play Dungeons & Dragons, you will know what I'm on about. If you haven't, let me try and explain it for you. So let's say you wanted to attack an enemy. That would then check the stat roll that is linked to that weapon. That stat is your percentage of success on that singular roll. For many, many actions in this game, you need multiple successful rolls to get a perfect roll. That is very, very quiet. So in short, the higher the stat, the better chance you have an successful roll. Keyword being chance because this game is built around luck and an RNG system so sometimes the game just won't play fair. If that is confusing to you at all feel free to drop a comment below, I'll reply, also you can go watch my Let's Play series of For The King where I'm talking about my actions while I play, that may be a better way for you to learn if that's more your style. Very quickly though, what are the stats? Let's cover them from left to right. We have strength, vitality, intellect, awareness, talent, and finally speed. I will be doing full breakdowns for all of these stats in the future, we're not going to overwhelm you right now. All you need to know is team composition has to have very very balanced stats. You need to have all of these stats as covered the best you can by at least one character. 
For example, by selecting one blacksmith, one scholar and one hunter, three of the four characters you are given at the start of the game, the lowest overall stat is talent at 72. If you're playing on Apprentice, which we are, you get a plus five to all stats, so it'd be 77. All of the other stats is at least 80 or above covered by at least one of the other characters. This is very, very important because all of these stats are going to be tested throughout your run. You need to have as high stats for across the board as you can, because otherwise one little stat being out of position can ruin your day, and that is a sad time. So for example, if I had two blacksmiths and one hunter, you can see how the intellect stat is not really being covered. It's down in the 50 marks, and that could cause us a lot of issues in the future. So now with this newfound knowledge, Go, go away, go play the game, go have some fun, go slay some beasts, go do some quests, go to the lore store, buy some extra things, and when, when you die, return to me so we can deep dive into another aspect of For the King because this game is so deep and we could do many, many more videos on this. Likewise, if there's more videos in the playlist, just keep watching them and become an expert before you even press play. So, thank you very much for watching. I have been TW1. I'm trying to keep these videos as short as possible. I could have done about an hour discussion on this game. That is why it's going to be a mini-series. If you want to come back for some more tips and more tricks and more guides and more learning and deep diving into this game, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. And as always, guys, peace out.